This is the setup screen for the Netgear R7000 Nighthawk router. They call their setup software Netgear Genie, as you can see at the top left here. We've got two tabs to work with, the basic and the advanced. This is the basic, however, if you're used to a BT Home Hub or a Virgin Super Hub, this is really fairly advanced stuff. Over to the top right, we can see the firmware version is 1.0.3.80 which is the latest version. So we've got six main buttons that show you what's going on. Internet, not connected, because I'm just using this router at the moment in um, standalone mode. Um, wireless, if you look, it's got the scrolling SSID and also the password. These are the default, um, default, default uh, settings as supplied. Attached devices, just the one attached device, which is the laptop that's plugged in over um, Ethernet. Uh, parental controls not enabled, ready share which is to do with the USB ports, there's one at USB 3 and one at USB 2, um, and at the moment we don't have anything connected to those ports, and guest network uh, currently turned off, turned off by default, you use guest network if you have guests in the house or the office um, and you want to give them access to your network uh, but don't want to give them your main password. Um, so you just give them essentially a temporary password and then when they leave you can uh, change it or disable guest network uh, without causing any problems for yourself. Going down the options we have internet so at the moment as I say the WAN is not connected so this router is not online. Wireless it's a simultaneous um, dual band router so uh, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz supports 802.11 B, G and N. The 5 gigahertz supports 802.11 A, N and A, C. Both SSID are broadcast. By default they're Netgear 90, Netgear 90 5G, self-explanatory. You can use these drop-down boxes to change the amount of traffic that flows through either of your Wi-Fi connections so the 2.4 gigahertz is set by default to the mid setting 289 megabits per second rather than 54 or 600 um, whereas the 8211ac is set to the max 1300 not quite sure why they haven't gone for the max in both cases and if we scroll down a tad further you can see there's uh, the security options by default wpa2 psk um, is enabled um, if you're feeling lazy you can disable security. Attached devices, as I mentioned I don't have any attached devices on here um, other than the one laptop. Parental controls, this is vaguely interesting once the option comes up. Or do we have, oh here we go. Right, if you look down to the bottom of the screen you'll see it's actually a URL www.netgear.com forward slash LPC. LPC stands for Live Parental Controls and that requires you to go to the Netgear website to that URL where you can download software for iOS, for Android, for PC or for Mac um, to secure those devices. Um, whether you want to do that remains to be seen. You could argue that um, it gives you a false sense of security. ReadyShare controls the USB ports on the router. Um, so ready share printer if it's usb printer obviously and then share vault is if you're adding storage guest network as i mentioned that's if you wish to allow a guest connection to your uh, wi-fi um, without giving them your main password if we now go over to the advanced settings uh, you can see there's a whole load more information um, so you can see uh, what each of the ports is doing um, IP addresses and such like set up all sorts of stuff to do with internet settings, wireless settings, WAN and LAN. Uh, however, I realistically doubt that you need to do much with any of those. Uh, QoS is interesting, quality of service. This is uh, where you can give priority to traffic over your broadband connection. Now this is mainly of interest if you have limited bandwidth and you want, for example, to ensure you don't get stutters in video or gaming. 
Now the upstream connection is specifically for gaming and the downstream is for video. If you have limited bandwidth, and I would say if you're talking about whew, less than 20 megabits per second connection over your broadband, then you might want to get into this. Uh, I would think these days most decent broadband connections are 50 megabit or even 100 megabit, in which case you shouldn't have an issue unless you're doing something a bit dubious like running an FTP server or even a proxy server for Pirate Bay. Um, if you're simply a regular domestic household, the kids are watching a bit of YouTube, you shouldn't have a problem. However, if you do, this is where you go to fix it. Guest network there there even um, as mentioned you can allow guests access to either the 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi USB storage so that's more of what we've seen already advanced settings are not going to be of interest to the vast majority of users media server by default DLNA and TiVo enabled, um, iTunes server is not. I suspect most people won't need to get involved with that. Parental controls as mentioned, access controls, control even. Uh, allowing you to block computers or electronic devices from your network not a bad thing particularly if this is in if you're working in an office and you have someone who leaves and you want to block their mac address to make absolutely sure that they can't use their saved settings to come back and cause you problems block sites block services i've got my doubts about this um the idea you're going to block a site based on a keyword i, I personally think is just fool's paradise block services um again this is if you're going to get into keeping the kids essentially from using the internet overnight um, in these days with 3G and 4G mobile phones well good luck with that um, email email notifications uh, this is if you're running an email server really at home if you're connecting to your ISP um, and getting email in the usual way or webmail this is pretty irrelevant administration so you can see what your router has been doing um, you can log traffic, you can look at attached devices, uh, you can back up settings, good grief, not quite sure why you want to do that, but I suppose if you're going to make some deep changes you might want to just uh, save the current settings, set password, self-explanatory, router update, that's for updating the firmware, which you typically, well you can do it online, or you can download the uh, file put it on a flash drive plug it in and update it's quite a quick process advanced setup uh, wireless settings are straightforward the wireless access point is if you're adding this router to an existing network and simply want to use it as a Wi-Fi access point which is quite an expensive luxury as it's uh, 165 pounds at best wireless repeating port forwarding dynamic dns if you have to get into any of this you're getting fairly hardcore uh, virtual private network is a similar story uh, what else we got remote management i struggle to see you'll be managing your routers remotely um, generally speaking it's far better if you're actually local and plugging in an ethernet cable Universal plug and play, IPv6, uh, Britain basically uses IPv4, hopefully we'll be going over to IPv6 quite soon, um, soon in this context is the next year or three, uh, so we can um, connect to the jolly old internet of things, as we're running out of IP addresses. Traffic meter uh, shows you what's been going on, but really that's just for monitoring, it's not actually for doing anything USB settings uh, are you allowed to connect any device or not it's a router where's the harm if you plug a flash drive in really it doesn't matter and then finally LED settings I have to say that this Netgear router has the least offensive LEDs of any device I've seen in a terribly long time they are a very pale blue um, LED they flash when there's activity so this allows you to turn off the blinking or indeed to turn off the lights in their entirety.
Um, not a bad option. I suspect most people won't bother, but if you're using this router in your bedroom, um, that's a nice touch.